Hey there, Lick and Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I'm going to show you three different ways in which you can pull off that stretchy G chord with these high notes. Okay, how can you play a G chord, okay, an open position G chord with the low G bass and still solo high? Okay, there are three solutions okay three technical solutions i'm gonna go over each one and i'm gonna give you tips on how to perform them uh without hurting your hand okay that's really important so um before we start i would like to let you know that this lesson is once again sponsored by skillshare because skillshare love lick and riffers and we love them back because Skillshare wants to give a thousand more of you free access to their platform, to all the courses on Skillshare. The first thousand of you to click the link below in the description will grab access, free premium access to the entire Skillshare course platform. You can learn anything you want on Skillshare. It's a platform for online learning for creative people in which you can learn anything from graphic design to creative writing to marketing to book design to illustration to photography to photo editing, music production, brush techniques, okay? pencil techniques photography and video editing classes like the fundamentals of DSLR photography course that I took by Justin Bridges or the video color correction course. Psychology, they have psychology courses as well. Anything you want to learn, you can find it on Skillshare. So click the link below in the description. The first thousand of you to do so will get a free trial of free premium access to Skillshare everything on Skillshare. So thank you Skillshare for this incredibly amazing and generous offer. And uh, now let's discover how to play the stretchy G chord, the dreaded stretchy G chord. So you have three ways to do it. The first way is obviously okay, to play it like this. Okay? And put your forefinger on three on the sixth string and your little finger on seven, eight, and that's pretty much it. You can't, unless you have bigger hands than mine, um, okay, unless you are playing from a very young age and then you have uh, that insane spider hand, okay, with long, long fingers, you can't really go over the eighth fret this way. Okay, so this, solution, the first solution, is only good for two notes, okay, seven and eight, okay, but it's unhealthy because my hand is like this, okay, and it's unhealthy, it's an unhealthy position. If you're doing it with five, okay, to get an add nine sound, it's fine, okay, okay. But even then, you're still bending your hand in an unhealthy way. So the first solution would be to use your thumb. Okay, now, okay, this doesn't work for all guitars, okay, but okay, it's also a very good solution if you want to protect your hand and you need the seventh fret, okay? Only if you need the seventh fret. Okay, it's a good position, okay, the thumb position on the G bass, on three on the bass, okay, your hand is perfectly straight, your wrist, your wrist is perfectly straight when you do this. So you can do, okay, two, three, five, and seven, okay, while doing this. Now, depending on the neck of your guitar, it might not be possible to do the, the thumb position. It's not, it might not be possible at all if your uh, guitar neck is large or if you're using a classical 
guitar. So there's the classical method. And the classical technique is the best one. That's how it usually goes with classical techniques. The classical technique also employs the thumb, but it employs it from the front of the guitar. From the front. That way, hey, you can play seven, okay? Very, very easily, okay? Just the side of your thumb, okay, on the bass. Seven becomes very easy. Same goes for eight. Same goes for 10. And you can also reach 11. Okay. But again, if you have long fingers, you can reach 12 this way. You can play from three to 12. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. If, uh, no, <laughs> I can't do it. I, I lack like just a little bit more thumb in order to reach 12, uh, but I can't do it. But again, okay, becomes very, very easy. Now you might say, but my hand is a little bit crooked when I do this, okay? But that's just it, it's a little bit crooked. And by lifting your hand and bringing it forth, okay, forward, a little bit forward, it relieves the, it's, it relieves the, the pressure on your tendons a little bit. So it's still a little bit unhealthy to hold this position for a long, long time, but it's a lot healthier than doing this, okay? Um, a lot healthier. Now, when you need seven, okay, I'd say use the thumb, okay, because it's the healthiest. And if you need to solo over G, then the thumb becomes your best friend because... Okay, because then you can use all four fingers. But if you absolutely need a stretch, okay, then the classical position is the absolute best and healthiest. And you can bring your hand even farther, okay, and find that sweet spot where the hand is the least crooked, okay? So thank you so much, Skillshare, uh, for this generous offer and for sponsoring this lesson, okay? And um, you, go grab Skillshare's offer, the first thousand of you. Okay, so get ready, you're gonna get addicted. It's insane, the amount of courses you're gonna learn. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.